Are you going to cut me off this time? Hey, everybody. Welcome to... <laughs> You know, each time I introduce you, you, you like always cut me off. You're like Hollywood. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> I won't cut you off this time. Okay, good. Bye, Tyler. Just say Hollywood. Okay. Just is <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are we doing? The, is, is the intro to the show gonna be on yet? That song, me and Goose. Uh, I can. I thought about us butchering a song every intro, but I felt that would get extra annoying. I think we should just stick to one butchered song, but we need to add the music at least. Oh, I'm going to, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I'll put the all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put the. So, with that said, welcome to another episode of Out to Bar Podcast. As usual, we are here at World Beer UCF, a bright sunny day in Orlando, Florida. Once again, I'm your host Mike, and joining me, as always, not interrupting me this time, we got Jeff, aka Hollywood. AKA Hollywood Squared. Hey. <laughs> so he's pouring some MIA. Little Friend. Little Friend. Um, it's the MIA uh, event, tap takeover yeah, event. Currently, we got the MIA Spotlight. event. On. We got like, I think we have like eight or nine taps on. It's pretty yeah. badass. But um, this is their one year. Uh, their one year anniversary beer and it is a 12 and a half percent imperial stout uh beautiful bottle i like it it looks like cycle brewing almost the way yeah. that the bottle is um very simplistic yep label and i kind of dig it but yeah 12 and a half percent imperial stout bomber so that's the only one that was in a bottle uh that wasn't on tab we do have some canned releases as well coming on tonight from them but just a all-around awesome now, event mia just hit orlando so and we have the Orlando beer, the one that they brewed for us for Orlando City. Yeah, we, we might have, have to try. On. We might have to try that later on the show. But um, yeah, this is uh, today's a sad Ooh. day. Today is a sad day in in society. A couple hours ago, we found out the artist formerly known as Prince has passed away. Yes, I did hear that. I was uh, so that's not great bar conversation, not, but no. it's, I found it out that yeah. way. But yeah. yep. So I would pour some of this out, but it's twelve percent, and I don't know. I'll pour a little uh, out for Prince. Yeah, a little out for Prince. That's you, Prince. So anyway, you have you had you just had the uh, the little friend. Yeah. How was it? It was. Uh, it's yeah. I'm gonna let you try it first. It is all of twelve and a half percent. It's good actually. I mean, it's really boozy. It's chewy. Yeah. Woo! That hit. That hits hard. What? I lost my train of thought. So this is yeah. This is almost would out. It's almost like barrel aged. Yeah, but it's not. But, but it's it is. Not, but it is. Yeah, I know. I mean, technically, it's not. But I'm sure somebody it's, it's, will ooh. say, "Ooh, if it's not barrel aged, it can't taste barrel aged." Definitely, but. definitely sarcasm in the little friend title. It's not a little friend. It's a right. Well, it's it's my it's, it's MIA. Yeah. So it's uh it's playing off of Scarface. Say hello to my little friend. Yeah. Miami based movie. Boom. Yeah. Well played. So if Jeff, if you were to give this a score between zero to ten with decimals. 8.3. Really? Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a solid B beer. It so doesn't get, it doesn't that, make A. It doesn't make A, but I give it like an 8.3. So oh, that's, I'm, that's, that's B minus. I'm getting more strict with my grading. Why is that? Because I'm sober right now. <laughs> <laughs> I would give this probably an, an 8.6. Mid-level B. Okay. Is it an A? No. I, don't, I think it's better than a B minus. I just, a little better, but I not think a B plus. Yeah, there's just not a lot. I mean, it's it's a straightforward beer, so yeah. it's not. It, there's no. There's no subtleties to it. It's in your face. I, I think they do hide the booze well for twelve and a half percent. It is still there, but it you, tastes you, like yeah. an eight percent. Yeah. Um, but there's just there's a little, yeah, a little bit of coffee ish, kind of roast, but coffee, nothing, but get, yeah. nothing else. And it's I, I I wish they now the cool thing is they could turn this into something badass with vanilla oh God, or yeah. any you know cocoa nibs, cocoa nibs, cocoa coconut, nibs right? everything. <laughs> but, yeah, turn. they could make this an awesome beer, but yeah. it, I think it's a solid. I think, like, I think it's a, a solid B. Yeah, it's a B beer for me. Um, so this episode we're gonna, we're gonna. We're, we're not gonna get down. We're not gonna get down like episode two, but we're gonna be. We're gonna get down. We're gonna get a little down. We're gonna talk about culture because that's what the show's about. Part of it is about crappier culture, and I know lately Jeff and I have been experiencing some negative aspects of the culture. Yes. Of what crappier is supposed to be, but some people don't. 
and, and uh, for follow the, those unspoken rules. Right, and for the vast majority, I think that this is gonna. I think this is gonna. We're talking as people who are our fans of our show. I think yeah. a lot of our fans of our show get what culture we're talking about, and I think everybody's gonna be able to relate to that one guy that they're like, "Man, I wish that, you know, he Someone's he listened to off. this." Yeah. Right. So, so that's, that's what, what we're mean, going essentially, for. Yeah. So the topic of the show is, you know, what can I mean, I don't know how to even word this. Like, what can the craft beer community do better? Right? Fair I guess, enough. I guess that's a – for on a whim, that's a good title. So my my thing is – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go straight into it – is what I think is needs to get better within the community is entitlement. Is that some people think that because they buy so much craft beer that they know somebody in craft beer – they have a title that makes them better than everybody else and they take it to the extreme and act disrespectful and not what the community is about for example i'm in a group on facebook that's full of craft beer enthusiasts in florida Mm -hmm. and some people bash what other people are drinking because it's not for, I don't even know for whatever reason they, they it's not cool they poo poo on it it's not trendy right and one of one of the one of the examples is someone posted I don't know their name but someone posted that they were drinking a Three Daughters Bimini Twist IPA now those of you who follow me for a while know I have a soft spot for Three Daughters so my opinion is a little biased but object objectively their beers are above average right the ones that they can. So the ones that you can get in distro, the five of them, I believe they're five, the, the beach, the beach blonde, the Bimini, the, the rod bender, yeah, the Cern, I mean, I don't and there's it, another one I yeah, can't I, remember. I mean, it they doesn't really, five it in, doesn't really in, matter what the beer is, you know, it, 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 above average or not, somebody should be able to post whatever they're drinking right. and not get shit on for it, you know? Right. And so there's a couple of people that, that shit on them for it. And I didn't say anything because I want to stay out of it, but like, I'm looking at the reasoning behind it, and someone posted, oh, because Three Daughters goes through City Bev, which is an, a- a- an Anheuser-Busch distribution company. Okay. I think. So they're poo-pooing on the fact that this guy, is drinking a, guy or girl is drinking at Three Daughters because the distributor, the company is owned by Anheuser-Busch and Bev. Okay? So that's one example that, like, what gives you the right to shit on somebody's beer like yeah, that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird... Uh it's a weird kind of culture shock because, not, like I said at the beginning, like ninety-five percent of, of the craft beer world is the coolest. The, mm-hmm. the reason I love this industry, um, you know, like this this uh, everybody loves everybody kind of mentality. You can kind of go in and, and drink anybody, you know, anybody's beer. The, even the distributors talk about, you know, oh, so and so's beers are great, and this guy, and it, it's just that kind of mentality. But I, I do think that there is a a bit of pretension finding its way in now kind of yeah. like the wine community where it, it's scary it's scarier now to get into craft beer than it used to be because you don't know if you're going to offend somebody by what you're doing right um and, and everyone has an opinion and you're entitled to an opinion but you shouldn't judge somebody because they're drinking a cider or they're drinking right and at the end of the day it all boils down to respect and just a shop and hop or whatever grapefruit respect people's decisions and what they like i mean at the end of the day you might think your palate's more refined or better but your palate's your palate and their palate's their palate and you just right. kind of let them let them do what what's good for them and if you want to point them in the direction of something that you think is great then that's awesome but maybe they don't share that same passion um you know at the end of the day like there's people at every level of this industry there's people who love the you know the enthusiast level who love the most rare and, and badass and awesome beers which you know i love those beers too but i don't buy them regularly right i don't come into contact with you know black tuesday or you know any other i don't come into contact with all that and i could but i don't because i love them they're great beers but i can also find something just like this mia beer that's just as enjoyable well not just as enjoyable but an enjoyable beer right that is available to me and that's the level i'm at and do I know and appreciate a good beer? Sure. But I'm not going to shit on somebody for drinking something that I don't agree with either. Right. And it also comes like Brewery Alliance, too. Like, you know, this, this same group, like someone went every day to uh, Cycle and, brought, and bought their weekday stouts, which is fine. If you want to do that, who am I to say you can or can't do that? But, you know, to, 
excuse me, to judge somebody because they bought Hunapu because, and your comment says, oh, well, Hunapu sucks. I bought Cycles weekday stouts. What are you trying to prove? Like that, you're just trying to start something that isn't there that makes you feel entitled. Or if, if I'm at, I don't know, Red Cypress and someone, I post a picture saying, oh, I'm at Red Cypress. They're robust porters, legit. And someone says, oh, Red Cypress sucks. Hourglass is better. Like, who cares? Good, that's your opinion. That's good. Yeah, who, who cares? Gives a crap? So and, and- why are you attacking me? Like, at the end of the day, I'm drinking local. I'm drinking craft beer. So that should be, uh, oh, man, cool. I think Red Cypress is okay. Or I think Red Cypress is really good or you know, but don't yeah. attack me because I'm not drinking your favorite brewery's beer. Well, and, and at the end of the day, it's all arguable at that point too. Like you just said, you know, oh, I got the cycle, the cycle stouts, and and you were drinking Hunapu, and Hunapu sucks. Arguably, there's probably more people that would say Hunapu's better. Mm. I'll tell you, I went to the event this year, and cycles cycle didn't do an event like Hunapu did for their release. Right. You know, and people came from all over the place to get Hunapu. So, are you going to tell me that Hunapu is a sucky beer because you don't like it, or because the world doesn't like it, or at the end of the day, why is it why is it not just your opinion which be, which beer is better and, and let people have their opinions? Right. You know, That's... I there are a handful of beers. I mean, we tried one on on, on the last episode that we did the freaking uh, Miami Brewing that coconut one. It was oh, freaking oh, awful. We both thought it was bad. terrible. Yeah. And the and, and your buddy was like, oh, I I kind of like it. That good man. I thought it was the worst beer I've ever had. But I'm not gonna sit here and be like you're a fucking idiot. Right. You know, like. That's you, your you palate. Don't know, you don't know beer. That's you your palate, beer. and it's like that's cool, man. Do do like what you like. Yeah. Why would I and, care? And beer, so, crap beer, is so subjective. Like, everyone has, everyone likes IPAs, and I poke fun how I don't like IPAs, but I'm not gonna go around bashing IPA drinkers. It's just not for me. Lately, I've been actually into IPAs. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but at, at the end of the day, though, and, and I think we come from a different background, being from you know Wob training, where our entire idea behind what we do at Wob is to make make beer a, a approachable easy. it's easy it's well you right. could come in and, and you literally could be like i have drank nothing in my life but bud light and we'll find you beers and and try and i'll tell you there's a handful of regulars man that over the course of a year i've taken from nothing but ciders to double ipas and you yeah. just you have to gradually give them and guide them the right thing but if somebody came in and i instantly was like oh you like bud light we don't serve that here get the fuck out of my bar then all of a sudden they're never going to drink craft beer, right? Because they're going to be like, "Well, That's craft beer is pretentious." Experience. Yeah. And th- there are a handful of bars, and I'm not going to name them, but there's one particularly that I dislike in Orlando oh, yeah. for that exact reason. <laughs> yeah. Because I go in there as a person who does know about beer and has been working in the industry for over two years and and trained in craft beer, did product at World of Beer, and I go in and and purposely, granted this might be pretentious on my end, but pre- purposely go in and say, "Hey, you know." What, what do you recommend for me tonight? I, I really like stouts and, and this. And I just want to gauge what they're, what they're you know, what, how they handle that situation. Right. And they just brush you off like you're not important. And I'm like, you know, that's a bar. That's a business that I could be there. I could be a regular customer of theirs. And I know about beer. And the best part is when I see like Raison to Extra on the shelf sitting there. And I'm like, oh, that beer hasn't been released in seven years. I know that, and I'm sitting here going, oh, well, you know, I like stouts. What do you, what do you recommend? Right next to the can. And then, <laughs> and then, and then they like, oh, you like, uh, yeah, you'll probably like, uh, the, you know, this beer, whatever. It's some like, you know, shelf turd beer. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. And then also, I'll get that, but can I also get that bottle of Raison to extra too? Yeah. And they'll be like, oh, you know about that? And I'm like, yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. I work at World of Beer actually. Yeah. And they're like, oh my god, never. Mind. And then all of a sudden, they'll start talking beer with you. And I'm like, what makes you think you're better than me before you knew that I worked at World of Beer? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's not, and that's what I said. It, it boils down to respect. To me, respect, the biggest problem in our country and in craft beer and in everything is yeah. that this whole uh, idea that respect is earned, not given. Right. I think it's bullshit. Respect is given to every single human being you meet. You should give. Every stranger some deserves sort of respect. your respect. Some sort of until respect. They, until they lose it. Right. But why would you not respect anybody the second you meet them? It makes no sense to me. Yeah. I mean, craft beer is becoming what wine got a bad label for. It's, it's a secret society that unless you know craft beer, you're not welcomed. And that's not what I know. That we don't run this show like that at all. And that's what that was, you know, when we started the show, that was my big thing is I do not want us to be entitled. No, we're we're a bunch of Joes, man. That's what we're we with microphones. We know we know craft beer, but at no point would I not bring on a guest who doesn't. Just because, mm-hmm. I mean, 
Dude, Goose, that. Goose is one that. of my favorite guests, and yeah. he doesn't know a whole lot about craft beer. He just got into it about six months ago. Yeah. But I love being able to lead him into cool beers and talk to him about beer. And you can literally see that passion for the craft world getting lit in him. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's, that's – dude, that stuff, like, I like that. Like, that gets me going because that's cool. And when you can turn somebody into, into something that you love – through just your own passion for it that's what craft beer is about yeah and and a lot of people you know i don't want to run a podcast because i think we're better than anybody i that's not us but there are some people who are self-proclaimed experts in in not only just orlando but in in the in country that we've kind of been around that really give people like us content creators a bad name because they think oh well i have this show so that means because I have this show, I know more than you. And because I know more than you, my opinion has more weight than yours. And wake up call, the word of mouth can kill any business, any podcast. Oh, yeah. If we sit here every week and just bash, bash, bash people around the bar sitting around us right now because of what they're drinking, we will not have a show. I wouldn't have business. My bar would close. Exactly. And word of mouth, I mean, do we get thousands of viewers on it? You know, every episode, I, I fucking wish. But enough people listen to the show. More, I, I take that back. More people come up to me in person and ask for my opinion than watch the show. So we may hit 100 views for our Red Cypress episode, but I'm having 200 people ask me, what do I think about XYZ? Yeah. And I'm honest. I, I'll tell them, but I don't think I'm better than them because... You know, I run, you know, we do a podcast every week at a bar that is intimidating and that, oh, we're, we're not craft beer experts, we're enthusiasts, right? And we never proclaim, proclaim to be experts, but like word of mouth and how you interact with other people can leave a lasting impression, good or bad. And, and, and that's it, something that I know, me personally, have experienced that I know I've, I've involved you just because I think it's hilarious. Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy some of the stuff that that you deal with when you're running an, an, an opinion based kind of a, a podcast, but it's not. I mean, at the end of the day, we know what it is. We know it's our opinion. So right. like, I'm not offended if somebody challenges my opinion. And you know what? I literally, I you could probably friggin' count up over a hundred times on this show that I've said, and I'll probably be corrected because I'm not sure about this. I'm not pretending that I know everything. I hope yeah. you guys correct me because then I get to learn a little bit more. And to be honest with you, that's that's what we're doing this for is for you guys to to be involved and, and you know teach us as we teach you, and we'll do whatever we can to connect with the community. That's what we're yeah. here for. But um, at the end of the day, it's just like this craft beer world doesn't need to be anything bigger than what it is, what we love about it, that you can come to a bar and, and sit down next to a stranger and be like, what are you drinking? Oh, that's awesome. I love that beer. Yeah. You know? Or on every Thursday at 5 o'clock, you come to World Beer UCF and join us on the show. We've literally invited everybody, and that's, like I've said once again, that's why we're not, we don't care. It's not pretentious. Think, like, I we want we, anybody to come over here. I think of all the episodes we've done, one guest was actually planned. And that was Carlos from our Ballast Point episode. He was our only guest that actually and what a good we guest. knew we were coming. What a we good guest. Carlos is awesome. Yeah, he's awesome. Literally, for episodes one, so that episode and after, every single guest has either walked up to us or we've they've been here and we've like, hey, you want to come on the show? Yeah, Even like Boston. A handful of them have been people we knew prior to the show that right. we were like, man, we'd love to have you on the show. But none of it was planned. It was all they well, happened Preston, to be here. We, and we knew Preston was coming, but he doesn't count. He, he counts, you, but he doesn't he count. Count. Stop bashing Preston. He's our I'm biggest not, fan. I know. Preston, I love you. No, but outside, like, I know Carlos. Yeah. I mean, I, I we wanted to do something with Ballast Point uh, for a while leading up to that, and that was just, I mean, you you wanted to do that horizontal for months, and yeah. it was... I was really gunned I, I was that. very thrilled with the way that episode came out. That's awesome, and, and that's just, it's a cool thing. It's a cool thing to do with craft beer. Yeah. So, I mean, that's I, that's what I want us to, to be. I think that's what we are every week is, is we're inviting. We're kind of funny, but not hilarious. Definitely not hilarious. But we have a couple of puns. Nobody's rolling. Lots of dad jokes. Nobody's rolling on the floor laughing. They, yeah. We might get an LOL, but we're not a Rolf. Yeah. But we want to be invited. We want to not be the assholes 
the few assholes that ruin it for everybody. You know, we want it to be inviting. And for me, you know, I think entitlement is is just ultimately an insecurity. I could see that. I don't even know if it's Man, entitlement. Like, it's I think it's more, I mean, entitlement is one thing. I think it's pretentious. I think we're becoming pretentious, and I don't want to. Um, there's a handful of, of awesome, awesome people in the craft beer community that that are, are keeping us from being that. And that's what the whole the whole culture is, is built around. And, and even on the brewery level, that's what it's built around. These guys are competing for business, and yet they're friends with each other. Because yeah. it's it that's craft beer culture. There's enough to go around. The, the market's expanding every day. We're taking more and more from macro every day, and they know that they're gonna get their share. Let's all do what we do. Everyone's love what we cut. love. What we do. Yeah. We'll all make our beer, and we'll all have a good time doing it. And that's that's genuinely it. Like we don't need to be bigger than that, guys. We've been gifted this awesome opportunity to drink awesome beer, and nobody has to pay out the ass for it or do anything crazy for it or. Why are we making it more complicated than that? Right. You know, like it's already, it's perfect the way it is. And just let's, let's be part of the community and, and nobody has to be, you know, slap somebody in the face because their opinion doesn't match. Right. I mean, the breweries themselves don't, I mean, from what I, this is personal experience, but the breweries I've been around, which have been many, don't even bicker with each other. Like, oh man, you went to so-and-so. Oh man, I've been there. They're great people. Hey, if you come back next week, I'm actually having their beer on tap. Of course, yeah. I know when we went to Bowegans, shout out to Bowegans and Bobby, uh, we went there after uh, Melbourne. They had they three had different red, beers on tap had, from different brewer, local breweries. They had three breweries. Florida beers on tap, and one of them was Red Cypress, which is down the street. Yeah. Essentially. Right. And it's right there on the big old board they had. It says Red Cypress, you know, whatever beer it was. I think it was Fruit de la Terre. I don't remember. Whatever. And Red Cypress, I know Ryan would do the same because we've talked to Ryan on episode six, but also like outside – of the microphone and he has nothing but great things to say about everybody exactly and, you know when we have him on the show you guys poke fun at me because i wasn't a big fan of his fruit de la terre and as you can go back to the episode i say it's good, but i don't like it and he was literally sitting a foot away from me he could have said fuck you this beer is awesome but instead he said whatever he said was all right well i mean you don't have to like everything i'm making it's cool if you don't right and that's why that's what the craft beer world is and that's what's so awesome about it is that like that guy literally they, this is something he made this is yeah. his, like not his baby but you know it's one of it's, his it's babies a, it, it's a beer that represents him and his and, brand and you know he understands exactly what it is you don't have to like everything i do but if the if the body of my work appeals to you then great and yeah. if not then whatever you know go to go to another place and i'm sure their beers are good i mean these guys have great relationships you know how many people i've talked to who are like who are like, man, I know and by name, so-and-so and so-and-so at this brewery. Man, they're great people. You know, they helped me get started in craft beer. I mm -hmm. used to homebrew with them before we opened up breweries. So much of that stuff happens, and it's just like, that's what craft beer is about. Yeah. That's where that's we need it, to live. It, it that's where it to be, needs yeah. to stay. And no matter how big the market gets and how much money gets into it, and that's the problem is once money and sponsorship and and – advertising and all this stuff and distribution all of a sudden everybody has an opinion on everything and you don't need an opinion you just need to enjoy the beer you enjoy and we'll all have fun you know i yeah. don't it's not like if i sit at a table with like five friends and we all order five different beers it's not like i'm sitting there going i ordered the best beer i ordered I, the best I beer for me that. yeah but i didn't order the best beer because right. it's the best beer for them you know if somebody orders a sea dog blue paw and i think sea dog blue paw wow that's like craft beer 101 beginner beer <laughs> yeah. i think that but that's the best beer for them that's what yeah. that and, and it might be leading them somewhere it somewhere might be different. leading them somewhere into the next level of what their craft beer knowledge is yeah. at one point sea dog was one of my beers of choice and it's not anymore so maybe they're on that same path so you don't know where people are and you don't want to offend them for no reason right it's unnecessary and for the record i was in dc before we take a break or halfway point break i was in dc this past weekend at the time of this recording, I drank nothing. I had one craft beer. It was uh, by Port City. Nothing but Bud Light. Yeah. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> and liquor pitchers. <laughs> I got crazy. You love your Bud Light, man. I do. And, like, yeah, I'm a host. Of I'm still a, a Coors Light guy myself. I'm a, I'm a host of a po podcast about craft beer and bar conversations. But, you know, I love Bud Light a lot. And... I don't care who knows. I don't care if is you it judge the best? Me. Is it the best pale lager? Yeah, dude. Better than Tejas? Uh, 
Tejas. Oh. I'm all about that Tejas life. Tejas is it's, good. It's brewed with thunderstorms and lightning. I know, yeah. Tejas. See, there's a difference between pale lagers and German lagers, okay? Tejas, to me, is more of a German lager. So where Bud Light is red, white, and blue. You know what I'm saying? Isn't Bud, <laughs> isn't Bud Light technically like an uh, American Pilsner? What do they dude, call these I things? Mean, they dude, fucking, I don't even know what they the call these things anymore. The marketing thing is so fucking confusing. I don't get it. Have you I seen? Really, this is actually funny. Have you seen that the Blue Moon commercials are no longer artfully crafted? They're artfully brewed. Oh yeah, because they had that commercial because, during the Super Bowl. No, th- apparently there was like a whole, a whole. I don't know if it was a lawsuit, but it was a whole legal thing about the craft culture coming after Bud Light for using the word craft in their because they're not craft. Oh my god! And now they have to say artfully brewed. Ah, uh, who cares? It's a word. They're not craft. But no one thinks it's funny that they say in the commercial no fruit added. Yeah, they have a whole line of beer that is nothing but fruit. <laughs> Like the Rita's, Strawberry Rita. You can cut this out. So I'm putting the disclaimer okay. in. You can cut this out. Pause. I forgot what I was going to say. Okay, go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say. Whatever. Literally. Okay. It was going to be something, though. All right, before we take a, another <laughs> quick break, Yingling is now the number one craft brewery in America. Fuck yes. Oh, oh wait, wait. Suck I remember it, now. Sam Adams. So you're okay, going to cut okay, this out, on. but I'm still okay. saying it. And if you decide to give it in, I'll be so happy. Okay. But craft is, is craft, guys. All right. It's not home brewing. And it's not macro. So if you say artfully crafted and you're not craft, somebody will come after you for it. <laughs> somebody will you let you know this? that you're wrong. A little bit. All right. So we're good. To, we're, oh, yeah. Uh, Yingling is now the number one brewery in America. <laughs> Sam Adams right. is now second. Because they're fucking traitors. That's right. I'm just kidding. Sam Adams is all right. That's Yingling, r- number one. Yingling, number one. Only craft east brewery. of the Mississippi. Yeah, that's really interesting. Like 16 states or something. That's amazing. That's fuck yeah, amazing. Dude. Fuck yeah. Yeah, fuck you, Boston Beer Company. Yeah. Just God, kidding, guys. Sam God Adams is cool, this. too. But Sam whatever. Adams is, is cool. Y- Yingling Zoe is number one in my heart. This is Goose, guys. Welcome back, Goose. Goose is back. Goose is back. So we're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to go on to uh, Jeff's, Jeff's opinion on what could be ruining, what could be improved in the craft beer community. If Jeff were to leave, we'll, so that's we, my we will answer. be right back. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! Whoa, wait, I might take this one. We're back from break. Oh, Whoa. welcome back, Goose. Well, you're, nope, I'm you back. Kinda, on, you kind of came in. I'm back on Machete. All right, so. Ooh, that is good. Isn't that good? It is. I've wait, had what? that. That is not for you. You don't want that. He doesn't like spicy. I do like spicy, so I'm going to take what, that. Goose, what is this one? That's we, the Bach Party. We got three different MIA beers from our MIA tap takeover that we have in front of us here. Mike is drinking the. Bach party, it's yeah. A, it's a lager, yeah. right? It's a no, Bach. It's a, it's a, it's it's a, a Bach. Bach. Yeah. It's called Bach party. Yeah. Get your shit together. I like that. It's fucking like good, right? Yeah. I'm drinking an Imperial Red called Machete, or Machete if you're this American. This looks like orange juice. Just try uh, it. No, <laughs> tell them what's in it first. Don't surprise them with that. It's a spicy Berliner Weiss. It's a scorpion pepper Berliner Weiss. Yeah. All right, here we go. Apparently, scorpion peppers are the number two hottest pepper in the world. What's the name of this one? That is called. I don't know. I don't. It's like something like. Just look it I'll up find out. Spanish e sounding or something. Yeah. Apparently that whole batch is made with one ounce of scorpion peppers. It's not. It's not that hot. But you get it. Yeah. It's like at right, the very you end. This guy? Yeah. That's machete. I like it. That's actually less hot than the habanero sculpin. Oh, that by is. By a lot. Yeah, but it's less hot. hot. It, okay. What's up, the bar? It's there in the house. <laughs> Goose got called away. The kitchen's getting hit. Darren Houskins. I'm a big fan of this Imperial Red. Machete. Oh, that's really good, too. I like that. Yes. The Bach's more my jam, though. Bach is good. Um, this, this Pepper Berliner is really good, too. Their beers are all very good. That that does have that cheesy taste that, that offends me. but Really? Then it ends um, with the spicy, so I'm all right. It's getting busy here. What the... Yes, it is. It's a nice little Thursday um, we got going on. Yeah. My mic almost fell. Oh, my God. So I'm going to shut Goose's mic off. All right. So change of plan. We're not doing the second part of this show is not going to be Jeff's opinion on what can be improved. Because once again, me and Jeff agree on everything except spicy beer. I That's just, the only okay. thing we disagree on. So I disagreed on, on that because I actually, 
I genuinely am not feeling. Uh, I'm on like cloud nine with the, with the culture right now at craft beer, so I'm, I'm not feeling like I need to bash anything that they're Anymore, doing. Anymore, I mean, right? I mean, essentially, I, you like I whatever the pretentiousness is exactly what the only thing I would have said. That's and that's what I feel. Right. It, I think that I encapsulated everything that the one thing that is really wrong that we need to work on as a craft beer culture is that, but. At the end of the day, I'm well, still better. I'm still really just a lot better, warm. having a great, great, great time with the way the craft beer culture is. Um, I just had a, a fantastic experience with the Central Florida Home Brewers Association, uh, as well as the Sunshine Challenge with our home brewing event, and and they're going to partner with us and and rework their event, and, and hopefully we can work together on it. But it's just it's one of those things we had we had a conflicting event, literally identical concepts. They're doing a home brewing festival. We're doing a home brewing festival on the same day, and the way craft beer culture is just non-competitive in nature. They come, they they came to me and said, "Hey, listen, we want to try to make it work for both of us. We want to get our people to come to your event, and we'll and we'll change our our, our event to make that work." So, um, just amazing, amazing that they did that. Great people, uh, great people. I couldn't I couldn't be on a, a better standard with craft beer culture right now so that's where i'm at yeah i mean they're a lot it's a lot bigger event there's more people involved it, it takes a lot of work for them to put that together and if you're a home brewer this event is like state known yeah and that people come all over the state to participate and the fact that this guy or, or a group of people were like hey we noticed that you're doing the same exact thing that we're doing so let's work our schedule event around yours and we'll include you in our event and if you include us in your event exactly and it's just like that's it's incredible because to be honest with you our event wasn't going to take anything from them right at all like right. we're they're the sunshine challenge they're from all over the state home brewers from everywhere they were going to be sold out tickets no matter what we did so right they, the fact that they even just thought to include us was amazing to begin with so um, I, I, I love craft beer culture. I mean, we're, we're sitting at a busy bar right now. Everybody's yeah. having a good time. We're taking up two tables. I'm sure people are pissed off. But at the end of the day, nobody, everybody's just happy. They're, oh, what are you guys doing? A podcast? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you people know? always look. Like, every every week we do this, you see people kind of, like, looking over, like, hey, what are you guys doing? Oh, we're doing a podcast. Oh, okay. A lot of people are like, oh, okay, cool. And some people are like, I don't know what the podcast is. <laughs> <laughs> start listening to yeah, us. Start listening. <laughs> it's free. But I, I, I just... You know, for all the bad things that we talked about with the pretentiousness, there's so many good things with the craft beer oh culture, and there's oh, yeah. so much great, you know, non-competitive, everybody love everybody kind of mentality. And and I have so many reps from different breweries that come in and talk about how great this beer is from a competing, you know, brewery and all. That. It's just amazing. It's it's an awesome world that doesn't really exist nowadays. No, and I mean, this event was going to be. Before before they changed, this event was going to be big, a right. good a good size. Now it's like we may not have enough tickets. Right, and that's <laughs> and that's actually like this event might sell. You know, out I now. got approached by by um, Chris. Uh, he's with Central Florida Home Brewers, and and he told me basically he's also doing the Sunshine Challenge as well. And he basically said he wanted to partner and and make it work for both of us, and uh, was very more. He approached me about changing his event to fit ours and then he was like would it be cool with you if we could you know direct all of our people to your event on that saturday and all of a sudden i'm like absolutely that's great and then i'm like <laughs> yes, how yes, the yes. fuck am i gonna do this <laughs> yeah. i i you know and we went from having 16 home brewers to 24 now we're gonna have to take over a way bigger space where yep. there's a lot more to go with it but we're gonna make it happen because it's now it's just the whole community is involved and it's it's gonna be amazing and and, and that's just what i love about this man it's like freaking nobody there's nobody that really pisses me off besides the outliers you know it's yeah. like everybody is so into craft beer that it just that trumps every other thing yeah and and everyone support like i'm surprised that in 2016 that this is the first event of its kind to even come close to east orlando even come close and there's a lot of great bars in general but like craft beer bars like you know obviously world of beer where we're here a public house is fantastic um, there's a uh, liquor, uh, Shamrock Liquors, Pats, like all these great businesses that have never even thought about having like a homebrew festival. I mean, to be honest with you, ever. this so this all spiked. And I have to thank you and Preston for it. But this whole idea kind of came to fruition when I was at Deland with you guys. 
And Aww. and I saw this whole like I th- this is going to sound bad, but it was like almost like this bastardized section of what everything had to offer. It was like you guys were at the very end, past the warehouse where all the breweries were. They're in the fucking back of the like, bus. Like the back of the bus. Like, <laughs> yeah. And there's like a handful of home brewing tables we all grouped like the together. Merch tables. And there was no, if you went down the other way, there's no home brewers. There's no, it's nothing mixed in. And I was like, man, I went to all those home brewing places. I tried their beers. They had a peanut butter porter at one of them that mm. would blow your mind. Like, they had so many great beers, and I'm like, you know what? These homebrewers are doing things on the same level as a lot of distrib- – better than most of the shit that makes it in distribution nowadays. Right. And, you know, they're not financed. They're not a brewery. They don't have a, a brick, uh, you know, a brick-and-mortar store that they can do it out of. And it's hard to be a home brewer in distribution. It's nearly impossible. Yeah. So, yeah. So these guys are doing it for what genuinely is the core of what we do. This is this is the love of beer. It's what these guys are doing it for. And I was like, you know what, man? Look at this. We're out at Deland. It's raining. It was freaking terrible weather. Shitty weather, and, absolutely. And everybody was still out there pouring off their beer for free. And they paid to be there to let people try their beer yeah. for free. Yeah. And and I'm like, this is what we need to be highlighting. This is the segment of craft beer that nobody talks about. That is the best part of it. Yeah. It's the base level home brewers, and that's you know that was kind of when I, when I came up with the whole idea. Of let's let's bring this to East Orlando, and I, I've seen a handful of homebrew events, but you know I talked to Preston about it. Uh, he was instrumental in helping me figure out the the actual template on how to make this happen. But you know home brewers pay; they pay to brew their beer. Everything mm-hmm. they do is an expense. Yep. Let's make it free for them to enter. You want to come and you want to pour your beer off to a bunch of craft beer lovers. I'm gonna let you do that for free, and that's why we made it free entry for the craft for the brewers, and that's why we've had we you know we already have people on reserve for for in case people drop out because right. we we filled up. I, I had I had 15 home brewers in a day after I posted it. Yeah, that signed up. Yeah, and it's you know that's the beauty of it. It's like man, these people are hungry to get their beer out there, and and now they get to experience that the whole culture gets to experience what they do because we give it to them, and you know. Yeah, we're charging people, obviously, but that's 50% of our proceeds are going straight back to the home brewers. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's the way it should be. Yeah, I, I mean, think. we're not making much, you know, profit in terms of hosting the event. Like, 50% is just to hire the staff to run the event. Oh, we're going to we're gonna lose money on, on that. We're going to make money on the bar being open. Right. But when you factor in, you know, facilities, you know, everything we need to bring in, I need to bring in... An ice truck. I need to bring in, uh, you know, Johns. Everything, tables, Porter Johns. Everything yeah. we got to bring in for this event, you know, that's going to be covered by the other fifty percent. So yep. hopefully, you know, hopefully we break even on on the event and we get a, a great experience here. Right, and that's what it's about. We'll have music. I mean, Jeff will be emceeing the event. I'm so excited to see you up from on my st- truck bed. Yeah, so excited to to see you on on your truck with the microphone. Like, oh. Uh, Hey guys, Hollywood uh, here. Uh, What's Hollywood up? Hero. And the winner is I. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a great event. I'm really excited for it. And to be honest with you, like I'm terrified a little bit because of the fact that now we're gonna get people from all over the state that are coming here for this yeah, event. Dude. And I better not I better not suck at it for yeah. my first oh, time. God. It's the first time we're doing this. <laughs> this is gonna be it's it's you don't know who's coming. So it can be you know 50 extra people. It can literally be like 400 people. You have no idea who the hell is going to walk through that gate and just be like, oh, my God. The good thing is pre-sale tickets are available at eventbrite.com. So hopefully, hopefully. Search for WAB UCF Homebrew Festival. Hopefully. (laughs) Shameless plug. (laughs) People will buy their tickets on Eventbrite. They are the same price whether you buy them online or at the store. We're actually eating the fees. There's two options. You can either pass the fees along to the customer wob decided we're eating the fees because you guys we're charging you 20 bucks it's 20 dollars. i don't want it to be 23 50 right. it's 20 dollars. yeah you know i'm not i'm not that's that's annoying as shit <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna eat the fees it's 20 dollars on, on online or at the store yes i don't care which way you buy your ticket however if you do buy online i have a better idea of how many people are coming so please do that <laughs> I know to, to go to go off that. I know um, I mentioned it a couple episodes ago, but Bo Wiggins had their year anniversary. Um, I'm not super close with Bobby from Bo Wiggins, but I mean we know each other, and he 
I went up to him and gave him like a bro hug, handshake, like the the you know the pat on the back, the bro hug. Yeah. He asked me how you know, hey man, how's the show? How's everything? The going? white guy, the, the white, white guy, guy yeah, yeah, yeah. black guy handshake, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he goes, hey man, good to see you, man. You know, how's the show? How's life? This and that. And him and his partner were running the. They were literally running in and out the whole day. But he stopped to take this time to talk to me about the, you know this podcast and how everything's going and how's the show. And hey man, I really appreciate you come in and this and that and. That's how it was at Coasters, too. Remember? Yeah, Dave yeah. was that way, too. We were sitting at a table. It's busy as freaking shit. And there, he's running around. He's sweating. And he stopped at our table and he's like, yeah. hey, guys, how's everything? I, yeah. I'm busy, but how's it? Yeah. How's everything? He sat with us for a couple times. Yeah. Just like, I need to sit down. I'm like, hey, man, get a beer. He's like, all right, I'll go get a beer. Gets a beer, sits with us. <laughs> and then and then drag it as fast as lightning and then yeah, it was then, off to the races <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah, off and doing paperwork and whatever else. But like, Bobby was telling me his his hefe and awesome his peanut butter hefe, which everyone goes ape shit over. He actually changed the recipe because enough people were saying, "Hey, this is really good, but I want more peanut butter and less clove and less less clove." Though I, the first time there wasn't any clove, but more people wanted more peanut butter. So he's like, "All right," goes back, ups the peanut butter to where it's it's more noticeable. He comes up to me at the event. He goes, "Hey, man." I changed the recipe. How do you like it, the new one, compared to the old one? And he goes, I want your your opinion matters. So, like, I want you to tell me if it's good or not. If it's not good, I'll consider changing it back. And I said, no, dude, it's good. You get a lot more peanut butter. This is blah, 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 blah. So he listened to his customers, his audience, and tweaked a recipe for the best. Big Love breweries it. will not do that. False. Prime example, Funky Buddha. But they're not, they're not, dude, they're obscure from Florida, dude. Come on. They're very obscure, but they are the second biggest, possibly biggest in, <laughs> biggest in reputation right now, probably, but second biggest in distribution in Florida. And their Blood Orange IPA uh, was not good last year. They changed the recipe Correct. and it was bad. And they literally posted on their website Hey, guys, we listened to you. We know it wasn't that good last year. We're going back but to what we used to do. I'm referring to the Dogfish, the Sierra Nevadas, the Oscar Blues, the, the, the Find me a ones. bad beer from Dogfish Head and oh, tell you won't, me why they me. need to change anything. But I'm they talking – talk, oh, no, they don't. Favorite brewery. I'm actually wearing a Dogfish Head shirt right now. <laughs> um, but, I'm like, Funky Booty is big in Florida. They have more of an opportunity to ch- tweak a recipe than compared to a – Stone or a Sierra Nevada. See, now I don't think that on, on that level it's just hard to it's hard to hear the like we were talking about earlier. It's hard to hear your customers on that level of distribution because who are you gonna ask? Your local customers? Hey, do you like this beer? If you're Delaware and you're all about fucking crab cakes and yeah. football, Old Bay. Whatever. Yeah. You know, that's one segment. But if you're in the nation and your beer is selling well, you don't want to appeal to only your Delaware clientele. And you also don't want to listen to your internet trolls either. So who who? it's harder to tweak your recipe to, to your clientele when your clientele is so diverse. In Florida, people in Florida typically, I mean, we're, we're a melting pot of a state. We have people from all over or the country. We're the most diverse in the whole most, country. Yeah, most diverse state in the country. However... Yeah. People, people in the majority in you know Florida came here for the tropical weather, the sunshine, the beach weather. You know, you kind of have an idea of what your demographic is in Florida, despite the fact that everybody's a transplant from somewhere else. Yeah. But if you're Funky Buddha and they say this beer was good last year, it's not good this year. What are you going to do? We're going to go back to what it was last year. We're going to change it. But if if your dogfish head and your national distribution and somebody from California says, man, I really wish 60 minute was a little more tropical. You're going to be like, well, it's not supposed to be tropical, you know? Or, I mean, or, right, right. You're you know not going mean? like, to listen to one person, but if, if a growing number of people say, Hey, your whatever beer sucks or this year's for, let's do good gourd. It's better when it's vertical style, when it's, when it's this year versus last year, because at least then the masses matter at that right. point. So everyone's saying Good Gourd has been falling off of recent years, right? Good Gourd's fucking awful now. I don't know why anybody thinks Good Gourd's falling off. It's fe- it fell off, but it's gone. I was being I was being nice. So 
Cigar City is not. Let's let's imagine Cigar City is in national distribution, and everyone is saying that Good Gourd is falling off. Do you think Cigar City is going to change the recipe? Fuck no. I wouldn't. Absolutely not. I wouldn't if I was them. They're going to be like, it's too much. It's going to cost us too much to change this. Don't, essentially, don't fucking buy it then. I wouldn't. I wouldn't if I was them either. That's what I'm saying. Is like these national distribution. If if everyone's saying, "Oh man, you know, good gourds are right." I wish we had all. If everyone's saying they want more pumpkin good gourd, Cigar City, if they're in national, will not change the recipe. If anything, the end, they're so, making imperial version and fucking with more pumpkin and call it something so else. So it's similar to kind of what they just did with Hellas, because hotter than Hellas is now gone, and now they have Tampa style lager. Right. Right. It's similar to that. At that point, if you get to that point, there's no point in changing the recipe because your the name is tainted already. Right. So I would not. I wouldn't say, okay, everybody, hey, let me type up a little disclaimer. I put it on my website. Hope that people see it. Hope that word of mouth gets around. Hey guys, good gourd fell off, but you know we're changing it back to what it used to be. Hopefully, people come back. Maybe they don't. What I would do if I was in those shoes, the same thing they would tell us is, hey, man, Hellas is Re- falling off. It's not good. Rebrand it. Rebrand it or make it better. Do a, uh, do a new one yeah. that is the old recipe with some better tweaks. Yeah. Take everybody's word into account and say, old, you know, old Good Gourd was great. What can we do to make that recipe better? And now we're going to re-release it as and that's Cigar City whatever the fuck gordo awesome yeah gord amazing whatever the fuck you want to call it but now it's their new version and then you put the disclaimer out that says hey guys we listen to you we know good gourd was hasn't been as good as you wanted so we made this new pumpkin beer that is as good or better than old, old right. good gourd and that's what i'm saying is they're not going to keep good gourd and retweak it and then fuck no they're going to make a, a whole new fucking beer whether it's a new recipe, the old recipe in a new label, or make an imperial imperial version, just like Southern Tier doing. It's pumpkin. also it's also <laughs> the the Boom. thing is it's also one of those things where when you're in a one year one time release, every year you put out this distribution, there's always going to be opinions. You could use the exact same recipe every single year, and somebody's going to say this year wasn't as good as last year. Yeah. So that's the hard part is when was the last time you had good gourd? A year ago. Do you really remember how good it was? You want some of this Bach? Yeah. I'm going to drink it all. Like, do you actually remember how good it was to no. the exact tasting I the point? Last, I think the last year I had that was in uh, 2012. And I was like, oh, Moose, this is pretty good. Not awesome, but it was pretty I'll good. I'll just drink Goose's beer. All right. Well, that's what I'm saying. They're going to fucking, just like, I mean, it's speculation, but I think Southern Tier Pumpkin was falling off. Pumpkin is not good anymore. So they're like, oh, shit, we need to do something about it. Well, let's make... A darker version of the same thing. And Warlock is amazing. Warlock is amazing. So good. It's the only pumpkin beer I like besides and Weyerbacher and Imperial believe, Pumpkin. I believe, I could be wrong, but the first year they came out with it, it was actually the same ABV as Pumpkin. I don't know. I could have swore. I I'll, think it'd be, I'll, it'd I'll, be really I'll weird it. if they just like somehow made the exact same beer and infused it with a same. It's a different recipe. There's no way they went from a double IPA to a stout and did no. not change the recipe. Right. But I mean, that's I could. I mean, that's what I think. Southern Tier might have did. I mean, I'm just guessing. I'm no. I'm no expert. But I. I will say. I think that uh, Warlock is the best by far pumpkin beer you can find. Oh my! I don't think so. I and Weyerbacher you- Imperial Pumpkin is a close second, and the rest are a mile and a half behind. Oh, I don't know. Including Good Gourd. Including Good Gourd. I'm not big on Good Gourd. Waterbacher you know is is legit as fuck. Uh, who made Isle of Gourds? Isle of Gourds was I know due Isle south. Of, Isle, Isle of Magurdo, Magurdo was due, due south. south, and it's really good. Duh, because it's really south, good, really really good. But there's like there's a fucking billion pumpkin. Literally, uh, there's not a billion. There's at least a thousand pumpkin beers. Sleeper pumpkin beer, New Belgium pump kick. Sucks not bad. Butt. Not bad. Sucks, but you know which Way one? Better than Good Gourd. Terrapin Pumpkin Fest. Shut the fuck up. Get was that better shit. than no. that. No. Now, if it was a Pumpkin Fest with a cranberry, awesome. Pumpkin you guys Fest. had it on here on tap uh, a couple weeks the ago. The thing is, ago. I don't understand why pumpkin beers are always light in color. Pumpkin should be in a dark beer. It's better. It's it's a pumpkin pie is not a light pie. That's a heavy pie. You yeah. don't drink. You don't. It's like. If you're eating that, you're not eating it like with a fucking like with a wine now, there's spritzer. An- there's another pumpkin beer that I, I That's really a, like. You're 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 eating pumpkin pie and it's a heavy pie. It's thick. It's 
fucking syrupy. It's it's pump that that literally why everybody's like pumpkin beers. Let's make a pumpkin wheat. Are you an idiot? Gross. Make a pumpkin stout. Always pumpkin. It, that's the same thing we talked about with coconut. Coconut. What does it pair well with? Chocolate. Okay, good. Let's put it in a Blondale. Are you an <laughs> idiot? Like yeah. no. Coconut goes in dark beers. Put coconut in dark beers, and it won't taste like suntan lotion. Put coconut in a in a white wheat, and it's gonna taste like suntan lotion. <laughs> like know what you're working with. I it's not, like I shouldn't know that more than a brewery. Yeah. But I mean, it comes out every year. I mean, how long does it take to brew a heavy pumpkin stout? Guess what? Or if you do it, if you age it or barrel age it. Guess what? Do it. Don't put out a shitty pumpkin beer just because it's a shitty pumpkin beer and it's pumpkin season. Put out a beer that you're proud of always. That's what craft beer is about. Whether it's good or not, you should be proud of it. Do you like pumpkin cider? Actually, (laughs) actually, Mackenzie's pumpkin cider is legit as fuck. Mackenzie's pumpkin jack (laughs) is so fucking good. That's an A cider for me. That is so fucking good. (laughs) And and if you guys and I. This is a craft beer podcast. We just talked about not being pretentious. <laughs> Let me plug fucking Mackenzie's Ciders right now. <laughs> Mackenzie Ciders, one, and Preston, don't kill me for this. One, Mackenzie Ciders is 100% not from Concentrate. Ooh. I will not say again because I was not proven wrong, but I was not also proven right that other big cideries use Concentrate. But mckenzie's 100 percent does not use concentrate so i can say that with a fact they use actual apples in their brewing but also mckenzie's ciders are all incredible have you had them all they're I'm a amazing big fan. i'm a big fan their cherry is a rainier cherry it's not like a coffee set it's not like a uh uh medicine it's not medicinal cherry flavor right. which you would expect from a, a cider uh, which half of the cherry ciders are. Their seasonal tastes like fucking cinnamon apple pie. It's yeah. amazing. Their, even their lazy lemon is amazing. It's good. It's, I, <laughs> their ciders are so good. I had McKenzie's for the first time. We're going off topic. I, I don't give a fuck. Ciders. I, we're going on ciders <laughs> right now. I had McKenzie's the very first time at this. Three, three years after this, I got into craft beer. But at the same uh, craft beer festival. We're at like 25 minutes. We're good. I'm a, I had the original and the Lazy Lemon. I was like, holy shit. Woodchuck will forever be my number one cidery. Forever. I would get Woodchuck tattooed on me. I love Woodchuck that much. Except for their pumpkin cider. I'm not a fan. But everything else I've had, amazing. Mackenzie's is a very close second for me on cideries. Very close second. Their black cherry cider is so good. Blows my pants off every time. And that's third, their third, third favorite, best for me. Third favorite cidery? Key and Curly out of Plant City at Two yes! Henry's. Yes! Two right? Henry's! They fucking murder it, dude. Their mango cider? Christ. Top three ciders I've, I've ever had. I've talked about them on the show before. Their tap room is so cool. It's it's, it's divided, and you can get We their, agree too much. It makes me their sick. Their ciders <laughs> are on the left side with their wines, because yeah. they actually make their ciders in their winery at Key and Key Curly. Key and fucking Curly, dude. Yeah. Oh, my God. But they're, they're, so they have winery that's Key and Curly, and, they have, and then they have Two Henry's, the brewery, but yeah. they're on the same premise, same tap room, everything. But man, their wines, or their, their cider beer. But this smile is so big right now. <laughs> but Mackenzie's, you talk about cherry. Their cherry, it's right? Fucking legit. Their third best for me. Okay. You probably like their lazy lime is probably one or two. No, seasonal is their best. Plain, the, the cinnamon seasonal. Okay. Cinnamon apple pie in a glass. I can't think that. It's That's amazing. Awesome. I haven't had it, it in a while, but it's really the good. The seasonal yeah. is so good. That's their best one. Their green apple is their second best one. Really? So good. So okay. good. If they put out a pear cider, I'd probably jizz my pants. <laughs> like, their ciders are so good. But they're, So then their green apple is their next best. And then third is probably Dude, cherry. It's the fucking black cherry, But bro. their pumpkin is, is, is fourth. Really is, and, good. and the thing is, like, pumpkin can switch with, with green apple or cherry. They're all so good. They're all, like, top tier ciders. So fucking good. And I, oh. I love ciders. And, and to be honest with you, the number one cidery in taste and not in health, but in taste, because there's about a billion grams of sugar in it, is by far Swedish Recordalig. Uh. Recordalig, all of, they're Swedish, but all their ciders are incredible. They're by far the best tasting cidery around. But 
I think McKenzie's is right there. You have to drink it over right ice there. and it waters it down. Fuck no, that. you don't have to taste it over ice. They tell you to. Okay, I, you're talking to the guy who won the contest for most ciders drank in any world of beer out of any loyalty member in that's, a month. That's something to brag about. Who I drank a lot of they're ciders. They're so easy to drink. I'm being pretentious. I'm sorry. In a good, <laughs> in a good way, though. Let me tell you guys about the CCC really quick. We're about to expand wherever this podcast reaches. The CCC came about there was a uh, wob wob has a employee comp con uh has an employee comp thing that basically beer shots are not comped but draft beers are comped right. and the comp works out where a draft beer costs almost the same as a beer shot so when you come out and you want to drink beer shots with your friends hey let's get around of beer shots if you're an employee it's better to just get a full beer right it's same price so what we did is we created the CCC, which is a cider chug club, <laughs> and we would we would chug ciders instead of taking a, a, a beer shot. Right. So within a month, I drank like fifty ciders because <laughs> instead of taking a beer shot, I was the whole chugging. Thing. I was chugging ciders. <laughs> yeah. So. I won this contest with World of Beer for drinking the most ciders in a month. It was but only 57? It was like 50. It was not even that much. But who drinks that many ciders in a month? I would. But anyway, I've had every cider that's ever been through these doors. And I can honestly tell you that there are outliers that are better from certain cideries and things like that. There's been great ciders, but consistently your best ciders come from either Recordalig or McKenzie's. <laughs> By far. Woodchuck's there, but Woodchuck, I just, I just hate Woodchuck because of how, like, how mainstream they became so fast, so fast. Is that a bad thing? No. They followed in Angry Orchard's footsteps. No, my God, Angry Orchard came after them. No, Angry yeah, Orchard dude. was in every Publix and Walmart and no. Winn Dixie and everywhere. Look up, look up right now on your phone. When did Angry Orchard become a thing? Look it up. Oh, I'm sure Woodchuck was around before them, but I'm saying Woodchuck's Angry Orchard around. led led the cider game for a long time. Fuck, fuck Angry Orchard. I agree. Angry Orchard sucks butt. So I'm I'm looking it up right now. Uh, I, I'm gonna guess Woodchuck cider has been around since 1991. I'm looking it up right now. Sign note: Woodchuck did start in 1991, so I was right. You researched it prior. He's lying to you. No, I swear to God, he winked at me. <laughs> he didn't actually. I'm what do I say every episode? I'm so under researched. I'm so <laughs> underprepared. <laughs> <laughs> I literally come up with the topic literally either the shower when I'm taking a shower the day we record or on my way here. Today we literally got the equipment set up and so, sat down and said, so "What do we want to talk about? What are we going to talk about?" Goose just your, took my your beer. Your mic is off. There you go. My uh, Sam Adams. I like that beer a lot. You said you didn't like it. No, I Dude, like he, it. He drank the fuck out of that. Goose just chugged a scorpion pepper Berliner Weiss. I have chugged the uh, habanero scorpion before. Why aren't you cooking with that beer? That is a cook beer. All right, this? asterisk. That actually would be good. Based on sales in 2014, the Boston Beer Company is the second largest craft brewery in the United States. Woo! I love Yingling. how I love how Yingling's considered a craft. Yingling is it's crap. It's all on output. I know. It's all on barrel output uh, per year. It's just interesting. Which is bullshit. I, I believe it's six and a half million barrels. If you break that, if you're above that, you're macro. macro. If you're below it, you're craft. That number should be way less. Way less. Why? Because you know how much six and a half million barrels a year is? I get that, but why does it need to be less? I actually think it shouldn't be barrel-based. I don't think so either, but... Sam Mams is available, to my knowledge, everywhere. Okay. That's not craft beer. Let me tell you this. Yes. Oscar Blues is probably getting close to being a top 10 craft brewer. They have, you know, 40, not 40, but they might have close to 40 different brands. Did you guys want another round? Yes, please. Surprise us. Oh, oh, uh, Roar Orlando. Roar Orlando? Yeah, it's one. I'll do the other. I'll do the other Berliner Weiss, the raspberry one. He didn't hear you. Um, Oscar Blues has like probably forty or fifty different brands, or maybe not that many. Twenty-five at least. They have a lot. They have a lot. A lot of different brands. Right. They're counting barrel counts from that brewery, 
So you're telling me like Dogfish had another example of how many different brands they have. 50. A lot. Right? Now you're going to count barrel counts from all of their brands as if they're one brand and say this brewery puts out six and a half million barrels so they're no longer craft. But what if what they're doing is still craft? Right? To me, craft means that they're putting the love and the time and the quality of brewing something that is not macro. You're not putting out, like Sierra Nevada is a good example. Sierra Nevada has got to be very, very close to being macro. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And they do 95% of their business with Sierra Nevada Pale Ale, which is a macro style of beer, a pale ale. Uh, Rolling Rock is pretty much macro. They're extra pale ale. Like, there's a lot of uh, people that are doing uh, pale ales in, in a macro level. Where Rolling Rock's a pale lager. Extra pale ale. EPA, dude. Know your shit. Which Rolling Rock? The regular one? Rolling Rock. The, the regular... Uh, I don't know. Rock, dude. Rolling Rock. The best The best, The best. best macro. It's skanky as fuck. I Rolling love Rock. Rolling Rock. I do, too, but it's skanky as fuck. It's the best beer for any setting. It's, no, it, no. Yes, it is. But like, it's an amoeba. <laughs> it morphs. It changes shape. If you're out to dinner, it tastes like a dinner beer. If you're on the boat, it tastes like a boat beer. I don't know what it is about Rolling Rock, but it's the be- it morphs into whatever you want. Kind of like Heineken. Kind of like <laughs> Heineken. Yes, Heineken, a good example. Lagunitas, what's up? Heineken, good example. In case you didn't know, Lagunitas is now owned by Heineken for international distribution. So that's like six months ago. But All right, well, Wikipedia says Rolling Rock is an American lager. It's an EPA. It says it on the bottle. Yo, Goose could be our own personal server. You're hired. Goose is a good cocktail. Yeah. He'd look really hot in some short shorts. <laughs> yeah, I could yeah. easily I'd kill we'll it. We'll put you in a tank top. So I brought the Miami Vice Raspberry, Rorlando, and the regular Miami Vice. Miami Vice is great, by the way. So I think you got Miami Vice, Vice with grapefruit or raspberry? That's the raspberry. What the f- That was on the fucking Are you list. sure? I think it's grapefruit. Raspberry. No, I thought the Berliner was raspberry. Oh, God. That's raspberry. All right, all right, all right. Cheers, fellas, to MIA. MIA, you're great, by the way. You do awesome shit. This Rorlando is fantastic. Try Miami Vice. Miami Vice is so good. All right, here we go. We, We rotated. That's so. That's way better. What is Orlando? It's a citrus pale ale. In a tulip? What? Bro, you're fucking up right now. I am not fucking up. Why would he put hold it in on, a tulip? Hold on, I'm looking. This is the Miami Miami Weiss. Yeah. Oh man, that's real good. Miami Weiss is really good. It is. Yeah. That's a lot of banana. I like that a lot. 9.0. 9.0 for a hefe, 9.0. Okay, actually no, 9.2. I don't know that it's a hefe. I think it's just a wheat beer. It's a hefe, Miami Weiss. Yeah, it's a hefe, bro. Know your beers, asshole. All right, guy, look up EP. Look up that APA. Right, I'm, looking up, I'm looking it up. That hold Rolling on, Rock, on. Pale Ale. All right, the Miami Weiss is a 5.2 hefe. Point for Mike. Jeff, suck it. Suck your Orlando MIA bitch MIA Raspberry bitch. Weiss. Suck it. Jeff's, Damn it, dude. Jeff's, Everybody's shitting Jeff's. on me. I'm going to go pee. <laughs> that, that has vanilla in it, though. Vanilla, banana, and bubblegum esters. Let, let's and, see if he gets the third one wrong, and, too. Uh, no, he totally got it fucking wrong. Orlando is an American blonde. Suck it, Jeff. <laughs> it, 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 seriously says, says, it seriously says on the, on the uh, tap handle, citrus yeah. pale ale. American Blonde goes into Tulip because a blonde is a typically, excuse me, a Belgian style. So suck it, Jeff. What an idiot. You know that? He moron. loses a beer. This one has West Coast hops, ruby red grapefruit, and hibiscus. Rorlando. I'm digging it. Do you like it? The Rorlando? Yeah. I actually do like it. Yeah. It's I nice. Like, and it's, it's a good, like, day drinking beer. I like the Miami Weiss fucking a lot, dude. I'm not like, a big, like, overly banana person, but that's, like, a nice... Smooth taste See, to it. The, the reason I know I mentioned this on the show. The reason why I do not drink Hefe's because I hate cloves. Makes hate. sense. Just like I hate 
IPAs that like rot your teeth and you hate oranges. And I hate or no, <laughs> I dislike oranges. <laughs> you don't. I don't hate, hate them. them. I dislike them. They're close. They're, They're close. close. Same See, thing. I can drink a beer that has citrus in it, but it has to have something else. It can't just be just citrus. But I fucking hate clove and IPAs that melt your fucking teeth. I fucking hate. American Blonde. Yeah, teeth melt, whatever. American Blonde, you dickwad. He doesn't look like a blonde. He said it was a pale ale. That's why I said it. he's fucking wrong, too. That's why I go, blondes don't go in a... a, a, Or pales don't go in a tulip. Why do blondes go in tulips, Jeff? What? Why do blondes go in tulips? Because they're a Belgian-style beer in a Belgian glass. Oh, we're so smart. That's why I said when you were in the bathroom. An American Blonde isn't a a Belgian-style, though. It's technically not, but blonde is typically a Belgian-style. Hindsight going in a tulip. So, what were we talking about? Um, we're talking about beers, but I think we can wrap it up. I know we're kind of running long. We're running a little bit long on this. Um, so, MIA, MIA. It's legit. I'm digging it. I'm real. I wasn't. I wasn't expected to like the Miami Whites as much as I was. I do. Great. Week, but I great hear week. great. I hate great. I, I heard great things about it. I think like, I don't know. Hefe's and me and Cloves don't. We're not meant to be. But it's fucking like. It's almost like banana bread ish. Yeah. Almost. And the funny thing is, in that last episode, we talked about some beers that maybe were from a different brewery. And I said some good things about this brewery on that episode that maybe yeah. fell short <laughs> in, in lost in translation. But it's confusing this when is a good beer. two breweries are from the same area and, and one's an abbreviation of the other. Yeah, practically it's the same it's thing. It's confusing, yeah. MIA is not Miami Brewing and vice versa. And and their beer quality speaks for that, just so yeah, you know. Right, right. MIA is great. Their beers right. are fantastic. So I don't know. Let's 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 do the uh let's let's plug start plugging it. We're gonna start do plug, the plug, 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 plug. You know what I'm Hashtag plugging, so let's PIA. do some other plugs. Hashtag PIA. Because I'm gonna throw out Goose. some names, I'm gonna do some shit. Goose, right what are you here. what are you gonna plug? By the time this episode airs, our competition for the best local radio will have ended. So Thanks for voting for us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to cut you off, Goose, with that. <laughs> Thanks for everybody who voted with us. I don't know. If it was we, a really nice thing to come in second place. Yeah, I don't know if we won <laughs> or not because this is currently being recorded in April. But I just want to take the time to thank everyone who voted for us, who showed support for us. A lot, a, a shit ton of people have told me they voted for us. I didn't so vote hopefully for they us. did. I'm assuming you did. But those who did, I wasn't we won. love you. I thank did. you. Hopefully we win. If not, hopefully we place... In the top three. If not, hopefully you guys like us. <laughs> if not, hopefully you guys still continue listening and watching the show. Listen, listen. If we don't place, I'm not going to be on ever again. We don't invite you on ever. You just show up. Well, it's because I, <laughs> I, I'm always here. He has I, a handsome beard. I, I know, I'm never true. not allowed to be here. That's true. But, yeah, it, on a serious note, we just want, you know, on behalf of Jeff and myself, we want to thank everyone who voted for us. It means a lot. It's great to hear all the good things everyone has to say and – so it keeps us going. Agreed. Especially me. I I'm glad that's your plug because now my plug gets less than 20 minutes. All right, Goose, go ahead. Yeah, you need you need to watch that. I don't think I have any your plugs. Half hour plugs. I gotta find other that's things. A lot of plugging. It's a lot of endurance. I gotta find other things to plug. So Goose wants to also plug. Thanks for voting us for best. <laughs> for best <laughs> wait, 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 wait! I got this. Hey, I'd really like to thank everybody for voting for uh, at the bar podcast. Even though he didn't. Even though he <laughs> did, you son of a <laughs> bitch. I did, I still got time. You still have time. Uh, I, well, I do currently. Do. Currently, not when this airs. Not when, not when yeah. this airs. I was going to. Then it's like I need an email address. All right, guys, he voted. Just, <laughs> he voted. He voted. I did vote. vote. When this airs, he voted. <laughs> yeah. I, at least I thought about it. Well, thank you, Goose. I got that's always a pleasure you having you having you on the show. All right, guys. You know what I'm plugging? I've plugged it a lot. But we're, it just, it's gotten so much bigger and, all, and more awesome. That home brewing <laughs> festival. It's only gotten bigger because fam brewing. It's so <laughs> awesome. Well, you guys are going to fucking lose. Why bro. did you not plug fam brewing right oh, now? I should, all right, I'm going to take that back. No, I'll you, plug you're, fam you, brewing. You can't <laughs> stick it back in. You already stuck it in. Listen, you stick it in and then you, got, you, then you pull it out. In you the pull Prius it in and, got and then you pull it out. No, you already got out of the Prius. All right, so I'm plugging the home brewing festival. I'm, I'm not plugging it in WAB standards or for us. I'm plugging it for for Central Florida uh, Home Brewers Association as well as for the Sunshine Challenge. Uh, go to go to go to that event. Um, Sunshine Challenge is going to be awesome. They were gracious enough to even include us in their event, which they could have just squashed us and left us alone. But they were gracious enough to even include us in their event. That's what craft beer culture is about, and these people are 
are genuinely doing it for the craft of, of beer. That's what they that's what they do. They brew beer for the love of it. And like go to the Sunshine Challenge. If if you can't make it, you know, I understand, but our event is on the twenty sixth of June. It's a Saturday. No, the twenty fifth. Twenty fifth of June. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm drunk, guys. Twenty fifth of June. It's a Saturday. This is why I'm here. It is another way over here. Uh, <laughs> I, I drink two beers. I'm hammered. <laughs> what um, are you, Joe? <laughs> but it is the uh, tickets are available on Eventbrite.com. They're twenty dollars for you guys to come. It's it's free samples from twenty four different home brewers for three hours. Uh, the bar will be open all day. We'll be having a, a bunch Food. going on. Food, everything. It's you get to be meet Hollywood. Event. And at the bar and, podcast, and the, we'll be there. We will be there. As Andrew. well as Red Cypress, as well as some people from Sunshine Challenge will be there as well. Um, it's going to be an amazing event. Yeah, and, and like Mike said earlier, nothing like this has touched east side of Orlando, but nothing like this really has been that big in Orlando as a whole either. And, right. and I, I really hope that it turns out like I like I dream it will. I, I have no doubt it will. It's going to be a great event. It's going to be really fun. Did you see this? Yeah, it's a picture of Darren. I know. <laughs> Dude, we got we're looking oh we look God. so legit. <laughs> All right. Also guys, uh the other thing, come out uh during lunch hours, eleven thirty until three o'clock at Wob. We're doing a new lunch club promotion. You get a lunch club card after ten lunches, you get a or after nine lunches you get a free lunch at World of Beer UCF. I have that. You also get one. a half off draft every single visit leading up to your ninth or your tenth lunch. So anytime that you present the card, no matter what if it's lunch three, five, seven, whatever. You get a half off draft, and then on your night or on your tenth visit, you get a free lunch. So, come on out, get your card, start coming in for lunch. If you're a businessman in the area, this is the place to go, man. We have great food, cheap food, it's awesome. And Goose is mad at me because I'm about to make his lunches busy for him. God, yeah. But I, come out, it's gonna be get awesome. Get mad, bro. Why do you get <laughs> so mad? Make me do work. That's more. That's more money for you. But that's man. all the plugs. I don't get money. That's it. Cool. I hope you enjoyed our. Miami Brewing episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was the l- Miami Brewing. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so thanks again for listening, guys, and, and watching if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, we rambled on a little bit, but ciders are awesome. Ciders? Yeah, yeah we did. We, we talked about ciders, <laughs> ciders for a while. Yeah, for a while. Can we go back in and edit <laughs> me talking about stuff? No. Damn it. <laughs> God, I got like some caught in my throat. So thanks again for listening and watching. And until next time, have a fantastic week. Cheers.